Now I had the first stag that broke down anywhere in the world. It broke down in Canada in the most out of the way spot that you can think of. When we launched the Triumph Stag, it was a beautiful car, but launched about a year before it should have been. You really want the last six months or year to refine what you're making. But no, Donald Stokes, who ran Leyland, who in turn ran Triumph, he said, it's got to get out. We've got to, we've got to sell it now. We want the market now. So of course they launched this Triumph Stag, okay? I'm in training and my boss at that time said to me, how do you feel about going over to uh, America to launch the Stag, you know, with service training? Oh yeah, I'll have some of that. And I go out to America and I do uh, about six or seven weeks, I think, in America, different places, right? Same course, different places. And then, uh, I buy a ticket to get my wife out to meet me because we've got to go to Canada. We're in the car now, the pair of us. We go stop the night at Buffalo. We go to Niagara to see the falls. I'm now heading for Hamilton, Ontario. I'm in a stag to show this stag to the Canadian. It's the only one in Canada. We have three or four days there. We make some really good friends. And I say goodbye to an Englishman who happens to be working in, in Canada, a nice guy called Al Harris and his wife. We had a couple of nights there with him. Um, and we're now heading back to Leone, New Jersey, but we're going to go back over the mountain bit this way. Instead of coming up this way through Niagara, we're going to go over the top. So you've got a road called the Queen Elizabeth Highway, which is 600 miles long. Right, one road, <laughs> got the same name for its whole distance. And we're driving, you only do 60, you can't bomb it because there's Canadian mountain police cars all over the place. So 60 is the speed limit and that's what you're doing. All the Canadians are very good, do 60. We're doing 60, snowing, right? And we're driving along, boom, stag stops. <laughs> so cold February morning, snowing, out comes the little socket set eventually. And I took the distributor cap off, turn the key, nothing doing. So that's stationary, crankshaft's turning, but that's not going round. So I've got my little socket set out and took the distributor out of the engine on the side of the road, snow down the back of my neck, and I see that there's some teeth gone off this shaft that drives the distributor. So we're not going to go anywhere. So we now thumb a lift to a cafe, right? Ring up the guy that we left at eight o'clock that morning <laughs> and say, can you come and pick us up? So he's in an Austin 1800, which over here used to be called the Land Crab. So, he, you know, good, goodness knows how many hours, about six hours later, he comes and collects us. Right, we go all the way back to where we came from. And then, of course, we had to fly down to New Jersey. And, of course, uh, I, I tell it, because in those days you had telex, you didn't have mobile phones and things. So I tell it to Canley, said, I've just broken down in, in the stag that's in Canada, and I can see all the teeth have disappeared off the jack shaft, which is part of the engine. You know, I think you should know. So... A couple of days later, one blows up in Austria because <laughs> they, sent, they sent half a dozen to all these different countries. You know, they were that keen to sell it, to get it out there. Instead of running it over here for sort of six months and then doing some export, they put some all over the place. So a couple of days later, the Austrian one gave up the ghost and then there was another one in France blew up and there was another one somewhere else. And Canley had forgot to harden some gears. They manufactured the gears, but they didn't harden the teeth. So, of course, these teeth just wear away. And eventually, you lose the drive to the distributor and the whole thing stops. 